So I have a few quick points about why do this as a movie instead of a PowerPoint? Why can't I just narrate the PowerPoint and send it out that way? Well, you might have run into this before, but the problem with that is while narrated presentations are convenient, if you're going to send it out for remote self-managed viewing, that is the viewers in control of PowerPoint, you could run into some problems. For example, let's say on a particular slide, the viewer thinks, well, you know, I kind of know this part. Let me go to the next part and they advance the slide, they will still be hearing the, narr the unfinished narration from let's say slide one, while they're looking at slide two. And the narration for, for slide two will likely start playing. And so they'll be hearing two recorded narrations at once and the whole thing becomes confusing. If they're not familiar with why this is happening, they won't know how to fix it and they'll just won't even look at the video, at the, uh, at the PowerPoint. So that's why we turn it into a video. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a, a recording of my screen, but I also just wanted you to um, have this um, available on the screen to look at in case you wanted to go back to the steps without watching the recording again. Okay, so we're going to record narration, insert it on each slide. We're going to determine the length of the recording and then make sure we set transitions for at least 0.2 seconds longer than the recording. So let's show you how to insert audio on the screen and make sure your transition to the next slide happens at the exact right time. So the first thing is you're going to go to insert and then you're going to go to audio. You're going to click on that and then you're gonna click on record audio. You don't have to name it, but you can. And if you do, the easiest thing to do is to name it the number of the slide. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, start recording um, some narration about this slide. So I click the red button um, and I can say, I did a survey, asked medical students what they thought about um, the quality and behaviors that demonstrate effective teaching. And they told me a lot of different things. But one of the most frequent responses was that good or effective teachers need to have a lot of patience. All right, so I'm gonna click that. When I click OK, it's done. And I can move it around anywhere on the screen. And you'll notice when I select this object, I can see these tools here. If I'm not selecting that object, I don't see them. So make sure when you wanna go to edit this, you click on it or select the object, then you come up to audio tools, press playback and do play in background. What does this do? It selects hide during show and play across slides and loop until stopped. You want these two, you do not want the loop until stopped. So unclick that. Now we know that this caught some of what I was saying about how to do this before I started recording. So, that can happen to you too, where you put something in there and you want to cut it out. You can do that. So you're going to come over to trim audio and it allows you, as you can see here, to um, cut out something in the middle or to cut out something, trim either end. So just for the sake of the demonstration, let's say I needed to trim to up here and I wanted to cut off a few seconds towards the end. I could then play it just to make sure it plays exactly as I want it. And then I press OK. Now, I hover my mouse over this control and I run it to the end and I can see this is 13 point, almost 13.2 seconds long. It's very important because I don't want it to keep playing. I don't want my slide to transition at eight seconds and then have this run into the narration for the next slide. So I'm gonna come up to transitions and I'm gonna select an effect that I wanna use for my um, slides. It could be anything. I usually say that people should choose something that's not you know, too crazy and that makes sense for what they're doing. And so, you know, we can do a simple fade or reveal. Um, we wanna make sure that this is unchecked. Usually it's in check mode and we wanna uncheck it. Once we select a transition, we apply it to all slides and we're good to go for never having to select a transition for the rest because they all already have it in place. Next thing we do is we want to make sure we said this was 13.16, so let's say 13.2 seconds. This slide 
should transition automatically, we check the after box, at 13.2 seconds, I think we can be generous and say 14 and that would be fine. So step two is compress the media and save it as an MPEG-4 video. So that means you're gonna to go to File and then Info, Compress Media, Save As, click on File Type, and then select MPEG-4 Video. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next screen recording. Okay, so on another slide where you have a different recording, um, let's say you've done all your controls with the playback and everything set, now you're gonna to go to Transitions. We check the time, it's just about 17 seconds. And you can see I've set this for transitioning after 17.2 seconds. So I've allowed four tenths of a second. That's plenty of transition time between slides and the next narration starting. So now let's assume we're done and we're going to save this just to make sure. And we're going to go to file. And this screen is often one that people skip over, but it's very important if you're going to save it as a movie. Um, if you've got 20 some odd slides or something, you have a lot of um, narration in there and those tend to be bigger files and they're embedded in your PowerPoint. So they make your PowerPoint a bigger file. You probably have heard this idea of compressing media before and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna click compress media. This has the least compression. In other words, it, it transforms into a movie, but with the, um, well, it, whether you save it as a PowerPoint or as a movie, it transforms it into the largest file possible, but with some compression. This is low quality and the most compression, and I do not recommend this setting, but I do recommend this one. It turns out a perfectly fine um, video quality when you save it as a video, and it also turns out a nice quality when you are turning this into an auto presentation mode, which is another option. So I'm gonna click here and we'll see if we get the screen and it's telling me it already compressed part of what was on slide two and now it's going through all the other slides and checking to see if there's something to compress and obviously there is and it finished very quickly. So just make sure you do that. It reduces as much as possible the size of your file. I wanna save this as a movie, so I'm not gonna to go to save. I'm gonna to go to save as and it wants to know where I wanna save it. So let's say, I'm gonna tell it I wanna save it here. I'm going to call it PowerPoint Demo. This is also something that people tend to maybe not mess with too much, but the automatic file uh, type that it saves to is PowerPoint. We're going to click on that and we're going to go up to MPEG-4 Video. We want this to be a video, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and then click Save. It says it already exists. Why? Because I did this training a little bit ago and I made another video. So yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Now, what are we looking at on this screen? Down here you can see is a little bit of um, uh, like a, a time bar. It's showing you this is how far along it is in transforming this PowerPoint to a video. Now, this one doesn't take too long because it's a short PowerPoint and there's only one video on it and a little bit of narration. Um, and so it's not gonna take too long. Yours might take a little longer if you have 20 or 30 slides in there. So just give it some, some time to do the work.